Start. Well, welcome um, everyone. Um, my name's Carol Jordan. I'm the um, Director of Teaching and Learning at the American School of Warsaw and also a member of the uh, Learning to Global team. So welcome to uh, the Learning to Thread. Um, I've been joined here by Simon May, who's also on the Learning to Global team and, and Stephen um, as well. They're doing technical support and backup. Um, recording and, and so on in the, in the background. Um, so thank you to this Learning to Thread. They've been really successful. We've been running them since, I think we started the first ones maybe in the beginning of April. Um, and so they're just conversations with, with educators around topics that are timely and important um, to them at that moment. Um, uh, we like it, they're, they're, they're small groups, and so we can have more of a conversation kind of feel to it and, and share our experiences. Um, and we have uh, Felina Hart here. She's going to be um, uh, kind of leading the, the, the conversation. Um, and Felina is coming to us from the American International School of Budapest. Um, so welcome, Felina. Thank you. <laughs> um, so the, the, I think before we begin, I think what we'll do is maybe just do it. We've kind of introduced ourselves anyway, but how about we just kind of go around the room, maybe introduce ourselves, what school we're at, and then what our role is in the school, um, because that I will certainly help Felina. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm here. She made it. <laughs> Thanks for just calling me. I was like, I don't know what was going on. Like, I, I've been here I, since 6.45, I promise. I just get in. Woof. <laughs> Era. I feel like making a grand entrance. I was panicking a little there. <laughs> Sorry. I was here. I just wouldn't let me in. So, Erin and Felina are um, both in uh, Budapest. Um, and so, yeah, one of the topics that came up was this idea about transitions. As we head towards the end of the year, we have, you know, there are all many, so many important transitions that happen for, for kids and for families and for teachers. Um, and, um, you know, they, they stepped up to help facilitate a conversation, to share what they're doing, what they're thinking of doing, and then also finding out and, and learning from others um, about what's really important in terms of transitions um, in this, this kind of environment that we're working in at the moment. So why don't we start with some um, introductions, um, just so that Erin and Felina know where you're coming from and what your role is. That will certainly help them. So, Bridget, did you want to start? Uh, yes, I'm uh, Bridget Neist. I'm from the International School in The Hague. I'm a deputy head student guidance. So I'm part of what we call the pastoral team. Yeah. So the, the, the team that looks, uh, takes, looks after the care side. Awesome. Students. Um, and Nure, is Nure there? She's on her iPhone. There. Aaron, do you want to jump in and we'll come back to Nure? Sure. Um, I'm Aaron Tayo Dickerson. I also work at ISH with uh, Brigitte and Annabelle, who, at least on my screen, is right below me here. And I work there as the assistant ed tech coordinator. Uh, it's my first year there. And I'm very happy to be here because I've been doing uh, what I can to support teachers uh, over the, the school closure. And I know we'll be welcoming students back to our campus tomorrow. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Okay. wow, you're seeming very relaxed. I know. <laughs> and you're here. <laughs> Talk to Bridget and Annabelle and see how they're doing. <laughs> Annabelle. Hi, I'm Annabelle van Newkoop. Um I'm tired. Uh, uh, I am the student wellbeing coordinator at the International School of The Hague. And I, so I coordinate a team of two school psychologists and three school counsellors. Okay. So yeah, um, we are welcoming students back tomorrow and there has been a lot of preparation. And uh, yeah, but I, yeah, I feel calm about it, but it, but it's, I do feel tired, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael, we need your microphone. Thank you. I'm so, I so often do that. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> okay. uh, so uh, I can edit what I just said. Uh, uh, 
Hi from Chennai, where it's uh, 1043 in the evening. Um, my name is Mike. I'd be, uh, I'm the associate principal in the high school, the AP and the IB coordinator. We were talking a little bit earlier about the AP exam still ongoing uh, tonight for our kids. Even though school ended for us last week, a week ahead of schedule. And so we've kind of had our end of year transitions for staff and faculty at the high school level. Um, and we're actually looking ahead to the next transition, which is opening school in in person, in hybrid, or at distance. And so um, as you guys open in person, I'm very curious to hear about your experiences. Great. Um, Nurei, are you able to join us? Yes, just one minute. Uh, hello all, actually I am academic dean and I just forward this email to my our librarians to join this meeting. So as far as I understand, this is only for the international schools and the librarians to talk about the resources about the libraries. I'm academic dean, I'm from Turkey, from Izmir, uh, from the school ACI, American College Institute. Uh, but I don't know if do, do I, I mean, myself will be helpful for you or not, but I will be happy to listening to you. Yeah, Nurei, this, um, this talk that we're having now is about um, supporting the wellness of our community, students, parents, um, mm -hmm. teachers through the transition times, ending the school year, beginning the, the right. year. The, mm -hmm. the conversation with uh, librarians is happening. Is that tomorrow night, Stephen? It's tomorrow. I think I, I, I just, uh, yeah, yeah, for both of them, I guess. This yeah, is yeah. for the wellness, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Wellness yeah. tonight, library tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Sorry. Okay. But all are welcome tonight. Anybody can come. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so um, with that, and I think um, uh, Michael, with his, his little bit of a practice he was able to do on mute, I think this is what we're going to be talking about today. You know, the important transitions that happen at the end of the school year. Um, they're so important um, about how we leave the year and then thinking about opening the year as well. And so I'm going to be posing some questions around that to Felina and Erin. And we'll hear a little bit about their context, their experiences, and then you'll have an opportunity to, to share what you're thinking about, um, what you're doing in your school. So Erin and Felina, do you want to, before you begin, do you want to just tell us a little bit about um, yourselves and, and, and your school and where you are at the moment um, in terms of this whole virtual learning and are you back at school or not back at school? So just give us a little bit of context. Um, so I'm Felina Hart and I'm from Texas. Uh, this is my, actually my first year in Budapest. So it's, it's been an interesting year with uh, the transition myself and then how this. Um, We've been on distance learning, I believe like 12 weeks now. 12. This is week 12 um, and we're out for the rest of the year. Although the government did just make a decree recently that um, early childhood and uh, preschool kindergartens should open. And so this week they did actually open for the younger kids to come in. And so we've actually talked to our elementary counselor about that. and what that has looked like. Um, and then they've also um, have made a determination that small pockets of kids who need extra assistance could come in as long as they're socially distanced. So a lot of our LSS kids or kids that are having trouble with the distance learning, um, they were invited to come in this week and sit isolated, but get some assistance from um, the LSS teacher, so. And I'm Erin Hawken. I'm originally from California, and this is my second year in Budapest, and I was in Vietnam prior to that at SSIS for five years. Um, and I'm in the high school. I'm the director of university guidance and do the well-being piece as well for 9 through 12. So, Felina and Erin, you're not going back to school. You're out for the rest of the year. So, yes. thinking about your students then, I'm, uh, tell us about how you're supporting their transitions at the end of the year. Um, you know, this is our last week of school as well, and, and we're, we're trying to go through these really important transitions to prepare the kids for the, for the next stage. Um, so can you take us through, what are some of the things that you're planning or thinking about doing um, to help support some of those transitions, even though the kids are not going to be back on campus? 
Um, I think the big thing is, as counselors, we've been meeting as a team every week since this has happened, and we've been having those conversations as far as what do we take what we normally do and then transfer it into the virtual world to make sure that we're not dropping anything because it is important. So we don't want to drop that. Um, so some of the things we've done is parent transition meetings virtually through Zoom, um, K through 12. We did that as a whole school counselor. Um, student transition meetings, so meeting with individual students. In the middle school, I'm actually creating a goodbye video for each of the, our leavers that has messages from their teachers and messages from their friends. Um, we have goodbye gifts that we're handing out to them. And in the high school, we did, the, we, so we did leaving groups. There wasn't many of them. So we had them all come in together and we did it during a lunchtime and talked about, you know, building the raft, but how does that look even though we're um, in distance learning? So how are we saying goodbye to friends? What does that look like? Pulling parents into that. So a lot of times in high school, our teachers didn't have time to do the videos. We tried to put that out there to get snippets from teachers. Um, and so we had put that, I, Put that out there as an idea to parents to get information get um get little videos from friends and a couple of teachers and then the teachers were willing to do that to make videos we have packets that are being sent to the mm -hmm. students home um and we did this with our seniors as well they got graduation packets with their caps and gowns and their certificates and like poppers and streamers and everything they would need for graduation and we did a little bit of a packet like that for our students that are leaving with a certificate and a gift. Um, we had talked about, and I think elementary is still looking at doing this, if you have a good delivery service, we looked, but um, in Budapest, we're really spread out. Um, so you could be an hour from school, but in some schools, like when I was at, um, in Vietnam, we were a bubble, like we all lived in the same area and everything was delivered. So having pizzas delivered, because we would have done a pizza lunch on campus. So having pizzas delivered to all the students that were leaving um, and do that Zoom uh, meeting together as one. So those were some things that are continue that we are doing or that we've talked about doing. Okay. So the so the things that you'd already done, you already do that are really important part of uh, those transitions. You're still doing them. You're just reimagining them and doing them in in different ways. So. Once we knew we were going to distance learning, we just said every, okay, how do we take everything that we've done on campus and we just do it virtually and we've done everything, every coffee yeah. that we would do as a team, everything I would do um, in advisory as far as university visits at one on one meetings with parents and students about even university or leaving and we just did it virtually we didn't let that stop us. Um, and uh, obviously it takes a little bit more time and a little bit more planning and some creativity, but it's worked well and it's been well receptive from the community. I mean, the parents, the teachers, you know, and we do a lot for our faculty mm -hmm. as well. And the students have definitely felt our presence, like they know we're there. Um, also making our calendars like completely visual, like I just have a, you can book me on my, um, in my email. Um, so students know that at any time they can reach me, they just click and they can book the, an appointment to see me at any time. Uh, mm -hmm. It's same thing with parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you've added that you wouldn't normally do that uh, the goodbye videos, <laughs> which <laughs> now I'm kind of like, okay, why, why did I do that idea? Uh, that, that was one thing, but part of it was how, because normally at the end of the year, we have a big assembly where we honor our um, students that are leaving and we have friends come up and do speeches and we, we have this big event. And so it was, how do we somewhat recreate that when we can't you know do the assembly we we are going to have an end of the year virtual assembly but it's going to be pre-recorded and so we're not going to be able to have the student speeches and it's the same thing with the eighth grade promotion that's going to be a virtual and um in a, a couple weeks we're actually doing a drive-by pickup where they're going to come and pick up the packages much like the seniors had they're going to come by and pick that up and get all the things that they would normally get normally they get candy floss and all these different things so we have this package being created for them that they're going to come by and then they'll have their virtual moving up ceremony as well um We've always done our farewells, yes, in a big assembly and then the small, like I said, lunch groups. And this year we've moved it into advisory as well. So we had our one-on-ones mm -hmm. and did something small, but because they're not really gonna be able to be recognized on stage, we moved it into advisory. So advisory students are supposed to say something 
um, in memory of that student or something they remember about that student and their friends in the advisory class, uh, the last mm -hmm. advisory class that they have next week. Uh, and then we're also gonna do our, our awards assembly that we do, the individual awards will be, because we do 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, and then the big awards for the all school awards. Um, so we're starting in advisories and small groups for an assembly, so all the 9th, 10th, 11th, and then we will welcome it into a big Zoom where everybody can be there to get see all the major awards um, given to all students in the high school. Thank you very much. So well, those awards wouldn't have not normally happened in advisory, but because we can't have the large assembly with everybody, yeah. we've broken it up into smaller chunks and then we'll end with a bigger assembly. Mm -hmm. Michael, I'm curious in, in Chennai, you've, you've finished. So tell us a bit about the kind of the end of year kind of transitions. Um, a lot of what I'm hearing, uh, Carol, is, is familiar and confirming. Um, trying to do a lot of what we did virtually, uh, trying to maybe add in smaller chunks because we had to, as you were talking about, Aaron, um, and fitting that into the larger award ceremony. So lots of confirming F things that I'm hearing from, from you guys. I really appreciate that. I know how much work it took. Um, I think you probably had the same mix of some doubts as you were mm -hmm. doing it and even maybe starting those moments, but really a powerful payoff, even if it mm -hmm. didn't go exactly as you wanted it to or expected, uh, everyone's glowing at the end of those efforts. I, I think it's, it's really worth it. Um, the, the one thing um, I, that I, I mentioned, you know, we had virtual graduation, which goes along with what you were talking about, really tried to recreate all the pieces of graduation um, as best we could. Uh, with distance and remoteness and maybe a third of our kids no longer in Chennai. Um, and it was, uh, it was a tearjerker. It was fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I guess the, the overall is holding on to as much that you can and recreating it. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, Felina, you mentioned those little small pieces where maybe you collect individual goodbyes for every kid from yeah. parents and teachers. It takes a lot of effort. People don't seem to have that time, they might take a reminder or two, but when those come together, it's just the emotion pours yeah. through when, when kids and feel that individual recognition from so many different people. So uh, keep it up. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking about the hate now. When do you, you're going, you're going back to school tomorrow. Um, when do you <laughs> <laughs> When when do you finish the year and, and how what are you planning for in, in terms of, of end of year transitions? We still have six and a half weeks to go. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Wow. So tomorrow we're starting phase one uh, of the of coming back to school. We closed, I think, the 15th of March. So Aaron, how many days is it? Well, Aaron every day tells us how many days it is. Yeah. Aaron does a video every morning <laughs> to tell us which day of school closure it is. So every year group will come back one day and tomorrow it's just for a very short time just to because we had to make everything um, one way direction in the school and put lots of uh, arrows. Um, so to get uh, familiar with the school building again, uh, to meet the mentor, the year leader, assistant year leader. So it's, it's just, and they get a welcome package, welcome back package from the parents. They made a nice bag with some gel. And, uh, and the second phase, they will come in again, one day, each year group, one day, and four days they continue with online learning, which has been very successful. And then they will have um, PE activities, mentor time, some study time. So it will be, yeah, it will be building up for, and that will continue in phase two for, I think for three weeks. And the last two weeks will be dedicated to what we call experiential learning and some project work. And uh, we're also planning at the end of the year to do 
yeah, maybe with two mentor groups at the time, each year has eight mentor groups, so we're quite a, a, a large school, to have farewell celebrations, uh, online assemblies. So it's, yeah, that's still, we're still working on it. Mm -hmm. am, am I forgetting anything, Aaron, Annabelle? And we're, at the same time, we're planning for the year ahead because it's also <laughs> clear that um, this is not going to end here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we first want to survive phase one, I think. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It does feel like we, um, uh, I think Bridget and Annabelle, that we're going to benefit maybe from hearing from other people tonight because we're a little further behind the, yep. the, the curve here. Yep. And we have more time to play with. We have a month and a half to go. And we still have to do graduation. <laughs> and there was a lot of doubt because it's, it wasn't clear what the government would allow. But now it seems that probably we can do something on site in That's groups. Great. Again, in with two mentor groups and then still get them in. But uh, mm -hmm. that, yeah, it needs a lot of organization and uh, planning still. Nora, are you there? Yes, I am here. Would you like to share something from your school? Yes, of course. Uh, I live in Turkey, uh, west part of the Turkey uh, in Izmir. Uh, like the all around the world, actually, uh, our school started distance education in the like, third week of March. And it is, it's, we, are, uh, we keep still uh, continuing until 19th of June. Uh, it was uh, Actually, we weren't expecting it, and it was like happening in one night. So we just prepared, we keep our spring break to prepare people for the distance education to all staff and the teachers. Uh, and uh, and uh, for a while, I think in, in, after one month, we just sent satisfaction surveys to parents, students, and teachers and get feedback and doing better and better. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, they are all happy now, but, you know, it is not face-to-face, -face, so... There are some psychological part and emotional part as mm -hmm. well. For, for instance, our seniors are really in tough situation because uh, there's universe entrance exams in Turkey. Uh, students need to take these uh, exams to go uh, to the university. So ch they change the days twice. So first they just go ahead with July and then they take it back to June. Uh, so we are just dealing with the students now. They are preparing themselves for the, those exams. So we are, we didn't prepare their diplomas yet. So we are working on them. And uh, as you said, we are, uh, we need to plan the coming year, but I mean, everything is vague and we don't know what to do because they, uh, for instance, Ministry of National Education, um, we are a private school, but we need to obey the regulations announced by, mm -hmm. the, by the Ministry of National Education. So for instance, they announced that we are going to do makeup courses for the students in August. But, uh, I mean, teachers are really tired, students are really tired, they did a lot, so they don't want to come back in August. Uh, in Turkey, school starts in September and ends in June, uh, so we are dealing with the ministry uh, things, and also we are a fund, I mean, there's a foundation uh, with nine schools, we, we are the part of it, so first minister decides and the foundation discusses, and then we try to uh, just manage what's happening in. Um, it was like a unique experience, uh, actually. Um, I'm working as academic coordinator in my school. So we are working about all the curriculum assessmenting. And uh, here also uh, during this distance education, ministry didn't allow us to do assessment uh, during distance education time. Uh, so it, the, the, the students only have their grades for the first term, not the second term. And we have some students, they just applied for the overseas and they need to have uh, their diplomas at least in August, but some of them failed in some courses in the first term, but it is not announced yet by the ministry what we are going to do with those students. So we have this kind of problems here. Hey, so you, you've got real challenges there. With yeah. Having to prepare these students for, for exams and those changes yes. dates, that must be... That must be creating a lot of anxiety and stress. Yes, yes, I'm yes, sure of course. they do not want to come mm -hmm. back in August to write their... No, their because exams. actually they need some time to relax, just right. be away. Because the corona thing is, uh, the normal life started here this week in Turkey. 
and they people start to go work i mean the transportation everything i mean traveling to other cities they allowed all of them and the uh, numbers are decreasing i mean the um I, I, I can't say that that uh, numbers, but we are not there yet. So we are really uh, worried about the second wave. It will be coming earlier. And now we are thinking about three scenarios for the next year. Mm -hmm. It might be the normal program. It might be blended learning. It might be online teaching. So, I mean, there are many, yeah. many things yeah. in our head. And uh, I think they uh, we can come back in August, I mean, as the admin team to prepare the school, yes, the, all the tweaks, yes. But yeah, for yeah. the students, for the teachers, I mean, it is too early yeah. for August uh, to ask them, to call them, come back. Yeah, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, one thing that you said that really resonated, which is something that we have done, and I'm not sure whether you've done it in your schools, is we did survey students Mm -hmm. um, certainly in the mm -hmm. in the upper school, um, every couple of weeks, we did a wellness survey, just took a temperature mm -hmm. check of how kids were, really analyze those and use those to help, you know, decide what our next steps would be, what kind of support the kids needed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, were they seeking more connection with their, their you know, their peers, their, their grade mm -hmm. level group and how we could facilitate that. Um, so that was something that worked really well for us, being able to have that data. Mm -hmm and respond to that. But um, thinking about teachers now, Erin um, and Felina, end of year, teachers leaving, mm -hmm. teachers retiring. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, how are you supporting um, kind of the end of the year? What are you doing um, to help support teachers as they transition? Well, I, like normally what would happen is in the middle school, we would have a party at the end of the year and um, the teacher's team creates some sort of like funny, funny skit or song and then they deliver it to the teacher that's leaving. Um, and so this year, a lot of them are actually doing like some virtual recorded ones that they're, they're sending out to the teachers. Um, but yeah, we've had some teachers who, who are leaving this year, but have gone back to the states now and you know things are uncertain with their next position so having a conversation with them and talking with them about okay let's take some breaths step by step and you know what are the options and just being there for them um but i think even just the staff as a whole trying to support them through this so we've been trying to do weekly newsletters for our staff with reminders and things to make them laugh um, virtual happy hours virtual quiz nights uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do. It, yeah, we so in, in, within our newsletter, so we've been sending the newsletters <laughs> weekly and we'll do like a self care section too. Like, what are you doing yeah. to take care of yourself? And so just, and we all take turns researching the articles and, and also just paying attention. We also do a wellness survey for our staff. We were yeah. doing that. Um, like once in the beginning, it was like every three weeks just to make sure. And now it's, we've done it a couple of times in the last. A month and a half. So I think all in all, we've done it four times in like mm -hmm. the, the 12 weeks, just to get a gauge on where they are. And also within that survey, kind of putting like, what do you, what else do you need from us? What are you, what do you feel you need from the counseling team? What do you need from your admin? Where do you need the support? What would be helpful? Um, and so that we could really help support them. And so from that had, come, you know, and we gave them fun activities, like how do you connect with others when we were really isolated, right? Like, so what are some fun games you can do? Or how do you ask a question that might be different than just how are you? And, you know, so trying to bring some, you know, just trying to come up with some creative, exciting ideas on how you communicate with somebody to, to one another or who's somebody you haven't, you've been thinking about and you haven't reached out to. Why don't you take a time, take some time to just reach out to somebody you haven't chatted with. And so just giving them those reminders. Um, we're doing a virtual hour party at the our last day um, with the high school. And then that's when we'll do our goodbye videos. And again, it's put on the head of the department unless the head of the department is leaving and then the principals assign somebody in there to organize whatever that goodbye activity may be. Mm -hmm. So our principal's leaving and I'm obviously part of that team. So, and he loves wine. So we're doing wine labels that represent him. So mine's like Northern California, my label's empathy. And then I have to write something about like my job and how it ties into him. And then we're gonna do you no know, wine tasting of sorts with him, so. Yeah, I mean, I know, I mean, we didn't know 
<laughs> you know, we, we were reflecting this um, today at our school. Initially, we thought we were going to be off school for two weeks. Yeah. And then it will be yeah. That's normal. We all thought that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and then it's the idea we just didn't know, just the, the social emotional needs, the kind of emotional scaffolding mm -hmm. yeah. that, that faculty have needed has changed dramatically um, over the time. You know, they're in a really different place now than they were at the beginning where they had much more energy and now just people are exhausted, right? Mm -hmm. And how do you, <laughs> yeah, they're fatigued, but how do you keep them going and excited and um, you know, engaged right to the end. Um, it's challenging. What about in, what's happening in, um, in The Hague? What Aaron. have you been finding about for teachers in terms of what their needs are and how they're changing? I'm not sure if anyone else is going to answer for this one. Um, I don't know. I, I really think the Bridget, maybe Annabelle, even more so, would know what we're providing on, on the counseling side. Um, I, I'm getting a lot of ideas from what I'm hearing from Selena and Aaron, but I'm not aware um, of, of a whole lot there, to be honest. Annabelle, do you know of anything of people been coming into your department and uh... um, specifically teachers? Um, I know uh, one of our school psychologists. Um, maybe it's uh helpful to explain we have a primary section so what you would have kindergarten to middle school mm -hmm. um they went back three weeks ago i think they went back in not fully but semi three weeks ago so b before we've been going back so we kind of had a trial experience of what that was like but in the netherlands the primary school uh, children don't need to keep a distance. So they're only requiring 12 plus age-wise to keep a distance, that's us. But the teachers still need to keep a distance. And for some of our staff in primary, it was the first time in the 10 weeks or 11 weeks or whatever it was that they'd stepped out of their home. So um, there was quite a lot of anxiety um, that was definitely there and present and, and rightly so it's understandable if it's the first time you leave your home and then you're required to to be a teacher in in a new normal which is very strange so one of our school psychologists from the secondary department has been working in the primary um, and while she's been doing that she's created um mm, i wouldn't necessarily call it a protocol but guidelines on how we can respond to um, the situation for our secondary staff and for secondary it's possibly even more anxiety provoking you don't want to make comparisons but because we have to keep the distance for our students as well there's a lot more restriction um, and it brings more that we know that the older well we seem to know the older someone is the more likely they're going to to transmit the disease, the virus. Um, so that school psychologist has come up with a framework of how, um, not necessarily that the counseling department can cancel the uh, teachers because we are really needed for our students right now, mm -hmm. but how um, specific staff members can support and we're calling it supporters. So mm -hmm. it's more like peer support. So um, someone who has felt more confident about being out in the environment, maybe has gone more often to the supermarket or has had taken those steps for social contact in the distancing earlier than others, how they can act as supporters to colleagues in having those conversations about, yeah, what can you control in this environment? What's also important is the Dutch government protocol uh, specifically has written, obviously anybody with health concerns will not need to go back to school, must not be required to go back to school, but also anybody with a, 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 an anxiety concern that is too uh, crippling or a diagnosed uh, anxiety uh, disorder, they, they are not required to come back. So um, that was really great to see that acknowledged and it's also helped the community understand that what position we're in that it's really important to look after the physical but the mental health as well of staff um 
so that's in place for the staff at the moment and also everything that you've said we've had uh, friday borrow there's been surveys sent out to staff mm -hmm. not regularly i like the idea of doing that regularly to keep that uh, i've just made a note that we've got some notes going on that we're writing together that mm -hmm. i think i was just thinking i think it would be a really good idea to write out a survey in the summer holiday yeah. that just to check in how how is everybody doing staff and students we don't know what we'll be coming back to yet after the holiday, but it's likely that it will be a hybrid model. I mean, there's not really, I can't see how it cannot be, that, that distance is not going to disappear. Um, so yeah, other things that you guys have been doing, uh, we have a staff wellbeing team that's only just in development, um, but the coordinator of that team has really made an effort in the newsletters to put things out and tips and um how to look after yourself and all the um the bingos that you see that you can do an activity a day to to look after yourself in that day so it's been amazing how the faculties look forward to it you know they mm -hmm. always sit, they like and i send it tuesday morning at six o'clock i don't know why tuesdays ended up being the day i just couldn't get it together by monday i guess but <laughs> <laughs> so I was like tuesday morning that'll be it um, yeah. but one week i was like later and somebody they're like is the newsletter coming or is the happy hour <laughs> day one we like kept the happy hours like oh my gosh this newsletter that's right they're like the pressure yeah it's just helpful but they were also then were dragging into their advisory classes like using a lot of what I was creating in a newsletter to then say oh we could do this in advisory which a lot of that has good crossover but uh, the surveys are great I love the survey because then you know on the happiness scale you know I run that excel spreadsheet and anybody that's a five or below I send emails right away to all those students in the mm -hmm. same thing with teachers mm -hmm. who might not necessarily feel comfortable no. just reaching out by doing a survey, and I always say it's a good self-reflection for yourself to just take a breath and reflect on how are you feeling? Because we don't have, really haven't had the time to do that. This is all new and we're running a million miles an hour. So just take a minute, mm -hmm. take the survey, and then we can go through and then check in. And then we have our resources um, that we can share. You can either talk with us or we have a list of resources mm -hmm. you know, through Truman Group or we have a, um, a therapist within the community who opened up her, her okay. services for free for the AI. Yeah. So anybody who is thinking that they really need somebody, she ran groups or individual sessions for free, free of charge, which was really nice. And then like within the first two weeks that we, we had this planned <laughs> to do a um, counseling web page and we we're like, oh yeah, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. Well, when it came to distance learning, like within the first two weeks, it's like, okay, we got to get this done. And so we actually have a page dedicated to COVID with resources for teachers and parents and students. And then we've been creating every few weeks, um, creating a like wellness tip video that we're posting on the web page as well that people can go and view. And we send that out in our weekly newsletters to parents and teachers. So it's just another aspect, another way for them to reach out and get the information if they're not necessarily looking at the newsletters or they're not reaching out to us. Yeah, today we just did a video and now it was about like, how do you slowly come back to normal and what does that look like, right? Because everybody, now I feel like this is the, the, the hardest phase, at least for me, it's either you tell me I'm not or I am, but then there's this awkwardness. And if you have a family, it's like, where's that pressure and what do I do and what's right and what's wrong? And so for me, reflecting and hearing from a bunch of different families and teachers, I was like, well, maybe this is something that's good to write about or talk about. So, you know, and the first thing was just like not judging, right? Some people are ready mm -hmm. to jump right back in and that's okay. And others are not ready at all. And you just need to gut check yourself and do what's going to make you happy. And so I think having those conversations, because we're all feeling it, but nobody's really talking about it. So we created a community video for, you know, for our teachers and our, our parents of, hey, this is, here's some things to think about, but really just follow your gut. Um, and it just gives them a friendly face too. There's a video that they can click on and it's us just giving a two minute tip, tip of the week. Great, thank you. So definitely with these transitions, you know, schools are trying to really honor those transitions, those really important stages um, in, in the year, the ceremonies that we have. But thinking now, maybe just shifting to the beginning of the year, and the beginning of the year also is an important transition and introduction. You know, how are we? What are your ideas? What are you thinking about 
for the start of the year, welcoming new teachers, orientation for new teachers, new teams getting together with new members, new students coming on board. Um, fifth grade is now coming up to sixth grade. Erin um, and Felina, interested to hear from you first about where are you and your thinking at the moment with, with starting the year? So we, we've had a little bit of a conversation on that. Um, and so like with the elementary counselor and myself, we we're talking about how do we allow students a chance to kind of close out their, their previous year, especially with the fifth graders, because normally we would do this big walk across the bridge ceremony and all these things at the end of the year, well, we're not going to have a chance to do that. So we've actually talked about within that first week of school, actually recreating some of those closures and giving them a chance to, to do those things and then say, okay, now here we are and we're moving into this new year. And I think it's important to take that time to step back and say, we, we need to close this out before we start that next year. Um, and, you know, even allowing our seventh graders to go see the sixth grade teachers and spend some time with them and just doing those little steps within there. Those are some of the things we're talking about doing. But we're also talking about, you know, kind of prepping teachers as far as that grief and loss aspect and, and the ideas that the emotions that kids are going to be having with not being able to close out the year. And so what are things for them to look for? What are, you know, red flags and how can they support support some of those um, issues by having some small group, group meetings within the advisory and really talk, unpacking the feelings with the kids and the emotions that they're dealing with and the anxiety. And so how do we prep teachers to be able to do that? Because obviously as counselors with the numbers we have, we wouldn't be able to necessarily go into every advisory. So prepping teachers to be able to unpack some of that as well. Um, we uh, also did our PD is going to be optional on whether or not we want to be on campus or do it virtually. So it's given teachers another two weeks at home if they prefer. Um, so instead of us being on campus on the 11th, we don't have to be back till the 25th. And so our admin is looking at doing all of the PD that we would do those 10 days before virtually. Um, so you have the option of whether we're back or not. You can choose if you feel safe enough to come onto campus. So giving them an extra two weeks to slowly ease into campus. And then we've talked as counselors again, like we did before school closed, we did a, um, a conversation with teachers about how, how do they take care of themselves and exactly what Felina said, you know, that preemptive unpacking of, of how the teachers are feeling during that orientation and how do you check in with yourselves and make sure that you are setting the boundaries and checking in, making sure you're taking care of yourself before you you're able to take care of the students and that you're open and honest about where you are in this process so that they feel that they're supported in all of that. Um, with the new students coming in, uh, just set up tomorrow, I have my planning or my orientation with the new student ambassadors. So doing the training online and we're moving forward as if we're gonna have orientation on the 18th. And if not, then we'll just do, they'll all be buddied up and um, we're getting the GDPR uh, okay from admissions. So when they're checking in with new students, they're checking if this would be okay to share information. And if we do have to take it virtually, that we'll do it and we'll just break them into breakout rooms, um, recording and make sure that we have like an advisor in there as well so that they're able to connect and meet with the students and do a virtual, we already have a virtual tour of our campus that we were doing for new students and families that were wanting to see the school. And so doing, trying to, again, just do what we would do and take it virtually, you know, talking with them about their schedules. Um, we're hoping though that we're back on campus on the 18th of August and we're able to just move forward. So we're doing the training as if we are having t-shirts made um, and just forging forward. <laughs> right, Michael, I'm interested. What, what are you planning in, in Chennai? You've, the year has ended. How, what, are, what are you thinking about doing to start the year? You're on mute. <laughs> Work with GOA Global Online Academy to right now to try to really nail down the different possibilities. As as I heard, you know, Annabelle say it's it's going to be some form of hybrid. We're we're guessing. So we're doing a lot of you know kind of how, into what structure will the transition occur and through which. And, and so the nature, you know, listening to you guys talk about uh, what you've done and what you're thinking about, um, it may be that, you know, our, our counselors, we're having a large number of our counselors leave 
uh, this year um, and, and move on to new schools. Um, I'm not sure that we're at the point of, of what I hear you guys are. So this is really good for me. I, I, um, what I think we uh, we're focusing on more than anything else is safety uh, and and process. I heard someone talk about there's a day where you just get used to going the one way, the new one way streets, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that was you. Um, <laughs> uh, and then days just getting used to everything else that's the new normal. I'm really interested in how you're planning those phase ones and phase two. So. I've got to go. Um, it turns out I, I needed someplace else. Um, Carol and, and Felina and Aaron, thank you for doing this. Uh, you know, every, learning too, you know, thanks for, for running this. I'm, I'm so pleased and delighted to know you, this is happening. Um, if I could get folks' emails address to follow up, um, oh, yeah. you know, so many rich connections, I'd really appreciate that. And if you guys could say hi to Jason Bailey, he's an old friend uh, from Argentina. Uh, <laughs> we see every summer um uh that'd be great uh because you might see him tomorrow right <laughs> that's great <laughs> okay thanks mike uh, thanks for joining bye, bye. yeah thanks for your support of learning too uh, i'll see you next time bye thanks thank you mike, really impressed. Good Appreciate evening. It. Good evening. <laughs> so what, what's happening in in the hague have you even begun to start getting your head around the, the new year um we have an induction coordinator and that's um the person who's in charge for the induction of new staff the last years we've had something like 35 members of new staff each year and they have a two week no a one week induction before the school starts during the last week of the holiday and she is working on three systems at the moment an online one, a hybrid one, and an on-campus one. <laughs> Obviously, she's a very, very organized person. Erin will be able to confirm, but I've been in the school for 37 years when it started with very few students, so I've never had any induction. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a very thorough program, and so she's, she's trying to prepare for everything. But my, um, my area is more the transition from primary to secondary for the students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's one of my big concerns. Okay. How do you, and also if we have to teach online students, you don't know. Mm -hmm. I think- Yeah, that's a, really good that's a really good point, you know, because we've often thought about, um, reflected on this as well, because we went into this online virtual learning quite suddenly, but we had relationships with our students. And we had relationships with our parents. So when we start the new year and at our school, maybe 20% of our students are new, our families are new. Yeah. So Same. what is that going to look like? Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we haven't built those relationships. And so that's why I was really interested in, in you know, what Erin was talking about, uh, about how you're going to, yeah. you know, bring these new students. I think um, one of the ideas is to slow down in the beginning of the year, the start of the year, and to, to take it a little bit easier, first to prepare staff, mm -hmm. and uh, to take more days than we normally would do, and bring in the, the new, which for us is year seven, it's the first year of secondary, which is like 200 students, maybe in groups. To, uh, to get induction instead of the whole year. And so take more time and also for the new students uh, to see the school, the building in mm -hmm. small groups. But of course we have to plan for all these phases now for the seven weeks, mm -hmm. which in a way helps us. The fact that we have to get the children on campus does help us to prepare for next year. Yeah. yeah. But a uh, lot of challenges there. Well, I do think that the, um, the, the surprise experience of school suddenly closing and, and staying closed for as long as it did has given us a better idea of what we might need to prepare for in the fall. Um, I, I think going into the closure, we hadn't made a lot of really specific concrete plans for what, uh, Carol, I think you said what a two week closure might look like, yeah. um, at, let alone a 12 week closure. And now we have the, the luxury of still six more weeks in the school year, but then the, the summer break to think, okay, if we have these three possibilities, let's really 
take the time uh, to really plan something out. Um, I, I think as a teacher, the thing that, that worries me the most, or you know, student-wise, is the, the students who are new to the school but not moving up, but who are actually moving into the school, because part of the, the social connection that they would need to make in those early days, meeting their classmates, who's my mm -hmm. friend gonna be in my homeroom or in my grade level, and how do you facilitate those sorts of interactions? Because if we are still social distancing like we're doing here in the Netherlands, bringing in a group of 20 students and spreading them over a large area a meter and a half apart and saying, okay, get to know each other is, is complicated. And as a school, we, we provide, uh, we use Google Meet at our school, so we have you know, classes with people you know, in a grid across the street and you can all talk to each other, but teacher facilitated friendship making or socializing doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I know school up the road where my wife works, they, they have in the lower grades at least put into place um, Google Meets for um, just hanging out. And so they'll say, you know, tomorrow at two o'clock, uh, one of our teaching assistants is gonna fire up the meet, here's the password to get in, there'll be an adult in the room, but you all can get together and just talk about what you're watching on TV this weekend or what game you're playing or how bored you are. And I've been thinking there must be something we could do that would be similar for, for our secondary school, for those older students who just need a place to hang out, um, especially if they're new, but to, to task some students with, you know, go, go and make sure those new people feel welcome and get to know who you are. Yeah. So that's what I mean, like we said, we're still doing, doing the training tomorrow. And if we need to, we'll just do it small. I mean, the luxury of Zoom is you can break them into smaller groups, right? So you mm -hmm. don't have 50 people on a, you can put five into different rooms or four so they can have some intimate conversations or still play an icebreaker game and kind of get some familiar faces. You can even start shifting them around into different groups and, you know, it's not ideal, but it, it's something, at least they'll know a face and, mm -hmm. And we start the communication over the summer too with emails, like welcome emails, just or these are my hobbies. This is what I like to do. What do you like to do? And what are you mm -hmm. most nervous about? And these is what, this is what I was nervous about. So just a lot of dialogue back and forth, um, you know, and with the secondary, it's a little bit easier because they are a little bit more independent. Like you said, we, we tried to do, we would do like lunches and they can come in and some would, those who are um, a little bit more introverted, but many of them do that on their own, right? They've got their, FaceTime groups and Snapchats and but yeah, it's it does help to just know they have a place. Does your school buddy up new students with returning students as well, so they have a person yeah. that they can talk to? Yeah, so, so that's what I mean when I said this. We're in the process of that right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're doing the training for tomorrow. Yeah. So oh, just, that's the training. Okay. That's the training. So I got it. Sorry. Recruited thirty-two students um, that I'm meeting with tomorrow in the high school and Felina will do the same thing in the middle school and the mm -hmm. high school what's expected and then I you know put out who wants to be a leader and then there'll be four students who help organize it um and then midsummer they'll get their buddy and be able to email them and fingers crossed we're back on campus on the 18th but if not we'll get creative but well, I love like Carol, that you said about teachers so I'm just thinking maybe there's ways of figuring out schedules and getting groups of teachers on so they get an idea of who the new kids are and students get an idea to kind of ask questions and have small mm -hmm. I, I don't want all the teachers because they won't have all of them and that could be intimidating but the majority of you know get ninth grade do maybe a ninth grade meeting a 10th 11th and 12th and have those teachers come on and have conversations would be good we, we did something similar for our fifth graders that are coming up to middle school, right? Because we, we, we don't know if they're going to be able to meet their teacher or when they're going to be able or, or what the deal is. And normally we would have them physically come up. So what we did was we actually sent the fifth graders a survey. You know, what am I excited about? What am I worried about? What questions do I have on this and stuff? And then we recruited some sixth graders and we've actually done these small breakout rooms where we have two sixth graders with like 10 fifth graders and a teacher in there and they're just kind of chatting about middle school and what's that's going to be like and and kind of helping them feel a little bit better about that that transition and stuff but also you know when we come back the idea of a big part of our kids really getting into knowing each other especially with the new students are our fall trips and in high school they've been canceled they normally happen the third week of school second or third week of school and in high school they've been canceled um, middle school haven't officially been canceled, but I think we're heading that way. So we've already started looking at how can we recreate some of those experiences when we can't actually go to these places and do those team building. So how are we going to do that in a way so that we can still have that strong community connection? Thank you very much. 
Well, um, it's, it's, it's eight o'clock, believe it or not. We've been talking for an hour. <laughs> um, thank you very much. These, these L2 virtual threads actually stem from the actual um, the Learning 2 conference where we have um, L2 threads, which are small groups of like-minded educators who sit around um, and talk about, you know, topics that are important to them. And I think this was a really beautiful example. I just loved this conversation. Um, I feel like the, we could go all night. I know. <laughs> I know, I know. And this is one of the things I love about learning too, it's the intimacy, you know, it's yeah. not a huge group of a hundred people or 50 people, you know, it really is an intimate group where everyone can contribute and, and, and share. And I really felt that tonight. So, um, thank you very um, much. I'm inspired by everything that you're all um, all doing. I'm definitely going to keep in touch with um, you all. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, so so take care and thank you for your time. Um, watch out for Learning Two, um, the conference in um, Singapore that was scheduled for late October, I think maybe early November. Um, was going to be at Singapore American School. It's 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 going virtual. Um, it may not suit our time zone where we are here, but um, <laughs> uh, it will be a virtual conference. So that's a, exciting for the Learning Two team to to kind of plan that. So yeah, watch out for announcements about that.